So, once again, good morning. We will be now looking into how to do the literature review, how to write the literature review chapter. In your thesis, you have five chapters, basically. Introduction chapter, literature review chapter, methodology chapter, results chapter, and discussion chapter. So those are the five chapters, right? We know the uh, structure we have shared in our first session, uh, what should be the structure of the thesis, and uh, the second chapter is the literature review chapter. Today we are going to look at how to do that. Oops, what's this jumping? Now, why do we do a literature review? We remember perhaps that we said that there are two worlds. There is the practical world and there is the theoretical world, right? And we start with a problem that we notice in the practical world. We select our research questions that we want to answer. And after that, we go into doing a literature review. So the whole idea, the whole idea of uh, doing a thesis is about answering your research questions. That means that when you do the literature review, you should focus on areas, literatures, that are related to your research questions. So there should be very tight links between your research questions, your literature review, and your empirical study. Now, one of the reasons why you will be uh, doing the literature review is to make sure that you are not reinventing the wheel, right? Some people, others before you, may have thought about similar research questions, may have thought about similar problems, and they may already have done some research and found some answers. So we want to make sure that we are not just doing something that has already been done. So that is the uh, that is the uh, one of the uh, one of the reasons. That is one of the uh, reasons why we do the literature review. Now, a second reason is uh, that at the beginning you have some rough idea about okay what is your topic and what are your research questions hi so you have some rough idea but uh, as you start looking into the literature you realize you may realize that your research questions may need some changes may need some i would say refinements so changes uh, should be expected. Do not think that you start with some research question and that happens to be the last research question that you will have on your thesis. Expect changes, be open to changes. As you read literature, you will realize that, okay, maybe this is more interesting. Maybe uh, this has been done. I should take a different perspective, a different angle into the same topic. I wouldn't, of course, there are some cases where some students change the whole topic and the whole question, you know, that is also, I've seen such cases as well. But uh, ideally, you know, once you have kind of your idea, you are expected to have some changes, but not 180 degrees that you start going to the opposite direction. So that's, uh, that, that, that's not the case. And finally, and also perhaps most importantly, now we are, when we do literature review, we are looking into the theoretical world. We are looking inside the theoretical world for a theoretical framework that we will use in our empirical study as our guide, as our map. Now, you have the research questions. Let us assume the case that, you know, why do we need a literature review? Let's go and answer it. Let's, you know, we have 
questions from the practical world, let's stay in the practical world and let's answer the questions in the practical world, okay? Imagine the case that, you know, we close, it's, it's dark here. Imagine the situation that it's all dark in the room and we are outside of, outside of, the, outside of the room. And I ask that, okay, in the room, I have a glass of water, a cup of water. But I don't tell you where it is, you know. So your task is to find the glass of water in the room. So I'll open the door, you enter in, and you need to find where is this glass of water, right? How would you do it? And it's all dark. Difficult, isn't it? So. Imagine the other option that I gave you a map. I tell you that, okay, when you enter the room, go five steps forward, turn left, go three steps forward, turn right, go two steps forward, and then you will be touching some, some table in front of you, and there you will find the cup. When you have this map, you just follow the instructions and you find the cup of water. If you don't have the map, you'll be just going around, you know, uh, probably, you know, probably uh, putting down some of the tables and, you know, some other things crashing, hitting some walls probably, uh, and it will take you a lot of time. So in this case, to find the answer to our question, that is the glass of water, uh, the map helps you, saves you time. So what we are doing, what we are meaning by this theoretical framework is that it's your map in your empirical study. You will use that map in designing, if you are doing a qualitative research, in designing your interview questions. So that when you do the interview, you get answers to your questions that the interviewee is not telling you just anything, but telling you uh, appropriate things according to your theoretical framework that will help you to answer your uh, research questions. If you are doing a quantitative study, vice versa, uh, that will help you to design your survey questions so that it helps you to make sure that you get answers, valid answers, to your research questions. And it helps you to save time, you know. It gets you to the target. That's, uh, that's one of the key reasons why we will be doing uh, a literature review. Any questions so far? Now, in the literature review chapter, the way forward is, uh, is as follows. Now you see here, uh, that's chapter two, and under that we have some subsections. Whatever, however you organize the chapter. So you see the dotted areas. Those are areas that will be uh, decided by you by, uh, based on your topic. So everyone has a different topic and you need to think about which are the areas of literature that you need for your literature review chapter. When I say you need, you need to think about the relevance to your research topic, to your research questions. So which would be the areas of literature that you need to be looking into for searching for your theoretical framework. Remember, your aim here is to find the map, the theoretical framework. So you need to be looking into literatures that will help you to find it. The idea here is not to make a soup. The idea here is not to show that, okay, you have reviewed a lot of literatures, but the idea here is to go deep in relevant areas. You may have learned a lot of things in the courses that you are 
visiting. It's not that you put everything here. Imagine some soup where you have vegetables, fruits, meat, fish, you know, in the same soup. It doesn't taste so well, right? I mean, you need to have either fish soup, either meat soup, either vegetable soup, you know. You need to focus on whatever your research topic is. Always when you are writing your chapters, think about how does this help me to answer my research questions? Just do not write for writing, but think about, you know, you will be making a lot of choices. And in making these choices, uh, think about always the relevance to your research questions. 2.1, that is called the key concepts. You may want to define. So here we are looking after what are the key concepts related to your thesis topic. And we are looking after their definitions. So you may want to have these key concepts introduced in one subchapter, or of course, you may want to also not have 2.1 key concepts, but you may uh, include the definitions in the places where they come in, for example, sections 2.2, 2.3, and 2.4. But however you, I mean, the, the, the design is up to you. Make sure that the last is 2.5 or 2.6 or 2.4. You know, I just put imaginary number there. It doesn't need to be five. Uh, that should be theoretical framework. I, am, I would like to see a theoretical framework which you will use in your empirical study in, in every thesis. That's the objective of the literature review. I think we have discussed in our first session about plagiarism. So this is literature review is going to be one of your two longer chapters. So out of the five chapters, uh, this is a chapter that will be something like 15 to 20 pages in text. And this is the chapter that you will be you are asked to provide a lot of citations. So this is from the theoretical world. So you will be reading from literatures from a lot of sources and you need to be giving credit to the original sources, the ideas. Uh, you are not going to be copy pasting. So copy pasting, I'm just repeating this, you know it, uh, but you know, repeating is, is not bad. Copy pasting is allowed. There is a couple of exceptions that it's allowed for. So everything should be written in your own words, except for one, if there is a certain definition. Can somebody, you know, move around that this turns on again? No, you just. Doesn't help, then. Let's see. Oh my God. No, I think I think I should keep pushing, yes. Okay. Good living, thank you. You got the message. <laughs> So the exceptions where you can copy paste. One, definitions. You don't need to rewrite the definition in your own words. You can, uh, you can uh, straight copy paste the definition. Once you do it, remember two things. One, the definition should be in quotation marks. And two, you make the citation next to it. And that includes also the page number. Copy pasted materials should always have the page number next to the year. So author, year, comma, page number. That's the uh, style for all copy pasted material. So definitions are exception one. Exception two, which is very, very rare, 
that is if you are uh, writing some legislation. You don't need to rewrite the legislation. Uh, article number one, regulation number five, whatever, uh, you can just write it again in quotation marks and uh, proper citation with page number. Exception number three, perhaps that can be the case if uh, in, in, uh, in your results chapter where you want to share some important sayings of some person. So somebody has said something and you really want to share it in your thesis, you can say it, write it uh, exactly how it has been said. That can be, for example, a saying from an interviewee. Let's say some interviewee has said something that you think is very relevant that you want to share in the results chapter. In that case, you need to be, you, you, can, you can write it uh, as it has been said. And exception number four, which is perhaps more common, is sometimes you may, you see some nice figure, some nice table, and you may want to uh, share it as it is in your thesis. That is okay. Uh, but then in the, in the caption, so you make the figure, uh, then you put the caption, figure one, figure two, table one, table two, whatever. You name it, you give a title to it, and next to the title, in parentheses, you write adapted from name, author's last name, uh, year, comma, the page number. So we need this in the, in the caption of the figure or the table. You know how, how to make captions, right? For figures and tables. So Nupur. For the figures, where does the caption come? Is it coming before the figure or after the figure? Where does the caption of the figure come? Is it after the figure or below the figure? So if I, if I look at this one, here we have a figure there down below. Should the caption of the figure, let's say this is figure one, should it be here or here? Above or below? That's right. How about if this was a table? Uh, it should be above. It should be above, right. And remember that always use the caption, insert caption uh, in the word. You know that function, right? Insert caption. Don't write just text under it or above it. Use the insert caption so that it takes automatically to the figures and tables list on the, is it on the third page or whatever page it is, okay? So that is about plagiarism. That's enough for that. Now, the structure, now here it says critical review. So remember your Bible, Priyanka, do you know what is your Bible? You don't remember your Bible for, for this course, for the master's thesis? Leave it, what's our Bible? Assessment. Right, the assessment criteria. Check the uh, lecture notes of the first session. There you have the assessment criteria. And there you will see for every criteria what it means to get a one, two, three, four, and five. So, you know, you are ambitious, you want to get a five. There, it's clearly stated what you need to do. And regarding the literature review, that needs to be a good synthesis, a critical synthesis. So, for example, it starts from defining the key concepts. So, when you define a key concept, there is not a single definition. You will find a couple of definitions. So, you need to uh, introduce various definitions and then you need to decide from your thesis perspective what is the most appropriate definition. 
And in doing that, you need to take a critical approach. Why? Critical approach means in every choice you make, you need to answer the question, why did you make that choice? Justifications, that's what we see in our Bible, is needed, are needed uh, to support your choices. Critical doesn't mean that you will say, oh, this is so bad, that is so bad, everything is bad. You know, that's, that's not the idea of being critical. So you need to be positive in your criticality. You need to assess them critically uh, and with sound arguments to support your choices. So now you see this funnel. The idea here is that you start from the general, but you go deep until you come to your theoretical framework. You start from the general and you go down to, do you narrow it down to more specific areas uh, that will end up with your theoretical framework. So you have you know, the wide concepts and from there you narrow it down and the, at the end you come out with your theoretical framework. So that's the, that's the general approach that we recommend for your, uh, for your uh, literature review chapters. Now, I don't know why this is jumping itself. So, what is what would be a bad literature review? You, you read three books, and then we said 20 pages, right? Or let's say you read four books, and the first five pages you write from the first book, and it's always about the same. The next five pages, it's from the second book, the third five pages, third book, last five pages, fourth book. Oh, you have your literature review. That's a bad literature review. So literature review chapter shows your expertise. After reading it, we should be convinced, we must be convinced that, okay, uh, the student has become an expert of this subject. So we are looking after variety of uh, references. So when we look at your reference list, or the thesis committee, for example, that's one of the first places after perhaps your description page that you, they will look at, okay, how many literatures have they, as the student read? You know, how many pages is the reference list? How up to date is the reference list? You may of course have uh, some classics in your reference list from 19, even 60s, 70s, 80s. I said some classics, but you should also have in your literature review more from the 2000s and 2010s. So if I look at the literature review and everything is from 1980s and 90s, well, that's not a good literature review, okay? And synthesis is important, critical synthesis. So I would, not want to see a lot of IBIDs. You know the use of IBID, right? From our uh, YAMC reporting instructions. So if you have one, if you have made one citation and if the next citation is the same, instead of repeating the same author, authors, you say IBID, right? So IBID means the previous, same as the previous citation. So I don't want to see the first five pages with one citation and after that all I bit, I bit, I bit, I bit, right? So we want to see a nice synthesis from different uh, sources. Uh, that is, that is, that would be a better. Literature review chapter. Okay, we have been talking about these already, what means a well done uh, literature review, starting from general, narrowing it down, uh, brief overview of the key concepts, 
and then at the end ending with your theoretical framework so those are the key elements of what means a good literature review so once it can take some time you do your literature review you find your theoretical framework and then of course you will do your empirical study it can take some time that uh, your <laughs> this is not working from here. I thought that I had, I had. <laughs> okay, thank you, Libby. It's, it's uh, you need some exercise, right? I mean, we should all jump and do some things. Yes, let's do that next time. So it can take some time. Uh, after you finish your literature review, it can take some time that you do your empirical study. Sometimes for some students, this can be over a year and uh, Make sure that before submitting your uh, your thesis, you go back and check if there has there come any recent literatures about your topic that you would like to add to your literature review chapter. Now, the literature is like ocean. There is so much literature. You know, sometimes some student says, "Oh, this is such a topic that nobody has done anything about." That's hard to believe. <laughs> you know, if, if you say that, oh, this is so new topic that there isn't much. It's really hard to believe, you know, there is so much literature in almost any topic. The challenge here is, okay, you know, what to choose, what to read, right? And in doing that challenge, of course, uh, you are expected to read the more relevant that are to your topic. So we will be looking at how to search the literature. So I will show you how to do this search. In doing the search, you will of course use keywords that are relevant to your topic. And basically what I suggest is that don't read the whole, you know, you find some nice articles, don't read the whole article, read first the abstract. You know, that's scan through the abstract and then you will realize is that relevant to your uh, thesis and also uh, what is perhaps important in what could be relevant in making the choice is that uh, you should choose those articles you will see how many times they have been cited by others so uh, at the end, you know, what you do in your thesis, you are citing some sources, right? And all the articles that you have, you will read, maybe they have been cited by other research. So the ones that have been cited more are more promising in terms of the quality, in terms of the quality of the content. So choose the ones that have got more citations. That would be my suggestion, and we'll see that how how you can judge the number of citations when we uh, look at the uh, when we look when we look into uh, searching for the literature. Now, a good synthesis is important. In no part of your literature review you should have the dominance of one reference, one or author or authors. So like, you know, when you are writing a certain section, it shouldn't be based on only one author, only one source. So make sure that in every section that you have in your thesis, in your literature review chapter, especially, you have a variety of uh, sources uh, that you have been. So as we said, this is to, see, understand that you have developed the expertise. 
So you are not aiming to fill 20 pages. You are aiming to reflect that you have become an expert in this area. And being an expert means reading a lot. So read a lot and then uh, reflect the expertise into the 20 page. That's the, that's the idea. Key words, key concepts, they will come from your research questions. So what is your topic? What are your research questions? That will determine what will be the keywords, key concepts of your thesis. So once you are ready with your research questions, before going into the literature review, the task that you will do is define your key concepts and define your keywords. So that's the first step into the literature review process. So last is about where to find the literature. So let's say you have your research questions, you have your uh, key concepts. Where are we going to find the relevant literature? Uh, there are a couple of uh, potential uh, places. So I have listed here uh, three. Now, in terms of literature review, there can be different kinds of sources, scientific articles, books. So remember, we are at the theoretical world. We are not in the uh, practical world. So newspapers, trade journals. So these are, these are more telling us about the practical, uh, practical world. So Tariq, for example, is going to look into the uh, textile uh, sector in Bangladesh, right? So in the literature review chapter, we are not interested in what happens in Bangladesh. You know, what happens in the textile industry in Bangladesh, that's not part of the literature review. Literature review is about concepts. So what about the textile industry? he will be looking into. What are the key concepts? Concepts means the abstract uh, theoretical concepts. So what are the key concepts he has? He will look into uh, in his research questions for his thesis. So that will determine what kind of uh, literatures he will be searching for. And by literatures, we will be looking into mostly scientific articles and books. And in terms of their quality, books are written more for teaching purposes sometimes. So textbooks, you know, they shouldn't be your primary choice. You may be reading some textbooks for some of your courses. They are written more for teaching purposes. So they are not, shouldn't be your first choice in your literature review. Of course, there can be some, uh, especially related to methodology literature. You may benefit from some uh, textbooks about how to do qualitative research. Which textbook are you reading in your qualitative research methods course? Are you reading any textbook on qualitative research methods? Really? No? You don't read anything. They don't make any exams, right? No. Oh. Libin is reading very hard because there's an exam tomorrow. Great. So textbooks are not the first choice. Books are okay, but more we are looking into scientific articles. And where do we find scientific articles? I have three choices for you. Now, first of all, out of those three choices, of course, we have the Young Library electronic databases. I'll be, now we'll go into and search uh, how to look into those. But I would be starting with Google Scholar. I'm sure you are familiar with this, right? Google Scholar. So I will be, let's open that one.
Now, Google Scholar, so sorry, you are interested in gamification, right? So if you write here gamification, we see that there are many choices of offered to us gamification in business, gamification elements, gamification in education, gamification of learning, gamification motivation. So we need to maybe narrow, you know, if we put on the gamification, all of those will come and most of those may not be relevant to your area. Which one would you suggest we choose for your area? Gamification, motivation. Okay, let's choose that. Here you go. We get 26,800 results. Okay. So you are not short of anything. Now, the good thing is that if you are connecting with your computer uh, from here, then it, it is offering us all, you know, sometimes, let's see. So if you see full text YAMC, that means that this is available as a full text in YAMC's electronic database. That's great. And sometimes it's available. So all these that you see on the right side, you click on it, that means it's available. But sometimes it's not available as we may see in this one. So not, not everything is available, but luckily quite, quite a good number of them are available. So now let's have a look. And the first one that we see that I mean, the, 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 the title is very promising for Sari, Gamification Designing for Motivation. Uh, so she can access that. Now, this is a bit like detect, detective work, right? I mean, the, there is the ocean, we are looking for the gem in the ocean, right? Okay, exercise time. Come on, everybody. Yeah, that's that's it. I mean, I didn't touch anything. Okay. Tariq, I think you were you were a good jumper, eh? <laughs> I didn't touch anything, so it's more the exercise, right? I should also come next time. So uh, this is a bit like detective work. We are trying to find the gem, the pearl in the ocean, and the first one is very promising. Now, the good thing is, there are two good things here. One, when you click on it, it opens the article. Why is this empty? Uh, maybe, yes. Let's wait some time. So we get the article here. So this article was a short one and it didn't have many, it didn't have many, uh, the references are presented here as end notes. There are only two end notes. So this wasn't so, so, how to say, so, so good from that perspective. Where? So for the article, when you find a good article, every article will have at its end the list of references. So from there, you can also access other good articles. That is one good side. The other good side of this is that I don't know why my uh, why my computer is bringing everything in Finnish language, but at least Libin and Sari are quite good in Finnish. They have been practicing. How about your Finnish, Priyanka? Putko Suomea. 
little bit. Vehen. Vehen. Vehen means little bit. How about uh, Nupur? Vehen. Vehen. Tarek. Uh, I know about three or four words and uh, some numerical uh, words, like terve, because... Uh, terve, kritos, ante, exi. And uh, one, two people that you can count. Uh, uh, Ukako. <laughs> uh, one, two, ten. One, two, ten, you can count. Great. So if you are especially aiming to stay in Finland, Make sure that you learn the Finnish language. Otherwise, you will have a big challenge to find any any good jobs here in Finland. That's that's very important. So this is bringing the the you know uh, instructions in in Finnish. So this first one, 440, means that 440 articles have cited this article so this article has been written in 2012 and after that from 2012 until today of course many new articles are coming and 440 have cited them so if i click on this link it will bring me all the 440 that have cited this article so this is important because especially if you have a classic from let's say 1993 okay well that's an old one so if you only write about that old one i would suggest that you also check all the articles which have cited that classic so if i if i uh, you know these are not so so let's say uh, classics 440 is, is not a big number i can find you some source which has 10000 okay then that becomes more like a classic so i click on it and here you go you get all the 440 that have been that are more recent than 2012, so there is 2015. Look, we found gamification in theory and action, a survey that there are 770 which have cited this one. So you see, you come uh, closer and closer, you find very good articles. And you may also want to hear uh, in your search, you can also, this is, this is now showing us all the dates, but you can also choose since 2015, since 2018, and the last year, 2019. So if you only want to look at those articles which have been published in 2019, well, we have 14 articles about the topic that have been published in 2019. So there are different ways you may want to uh, look into this. And some of the articles are actually literature review articles. So we have different kinds of scientific articles. So one type, which I recommend highly, they are literature review articles so if we think about the gamification so let's go back if i put here literature review on Motivation. Well, let's stick with Sari's area. Three million two hundred thousand two hundred ten thousand results. So this is old, you know. Let's put from year two thousand fifteen. Public service motivation, a systematic literature review and 
outlook, a literature review, blah, blah. So check out these kinds of literature review articles. So some people have done already some literature review on some concepts. That will help you, you know, don't just make the same literature review. Okay. Uh, so you are you can be prone to uh, be you know making some plagiarism if you find a good literature review article on your topic and you know let's take everything and make your thesis literature review that's not what we are after but these will help you right can i use all of them if i add more like other ones too or should i just choose like some of them i cannot use all of them if yeah, don't use all. Of, don't use all of them. Like it is, you know. Just don't. Don't just write in the same order what this literature review has done. Yeah, of course not. But if I, or if I would do that, but I would add like half more. Still not allowed. So you should read and you should synthesize and write in your own words. That's the idea. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but life isn't. Yeah, I, life I, isn't. I, my own words and so on. But I can I use all the same reference? Mm. Oh yes, you can yeah. use the same references, of course. Life is not ideal, you know. We we encounter all kinds of situations and. So let's have a look at. Okay, jumping time. I I can't push up this time. That's good. So, Priyanka, what is your concept that you are looking into in your thesis? What concept will you be looking into? Let's have a look at what you get if you put their sign language. Sign language, it 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 brings a lot of uh, let's say subtopics under it: recognition, interpreters, acquisition, translation, sign language studies, sign language development. Is there anything you would like to choose, or should we just take sign language? Sign language development. Okay, let's have a look at that. So 282,000. So here we have something from 2016, sign language and spoken language for children with hearing loss, a systematic review. So we have also some uh, literature review on this, on this topic. Okay, how about Nupur? What is your what, what banking? Private banking services. So, this is quite general. Let's have a look if it will offer us some, some, uh, some private banking. My system so for you said private banking services. It doesn't matter. We are you know Finland is the practical world. Now in the literature review, you are not going to limit yourself to the private banking services in Finland. Uh, in the literature review, your concept is private banking services. So 
your practical, your research context is Finland, but in the literature review, you look generally at private banking services. So you don't go into that. That is too general, you know, you need to focus on what is it interesting about private banking services. So that is too wide for becoming a thesis topic. You need to focus, you need to take a specific angle. And when you look at these, uh, you can get some, uh, you can get some maybe ideas. So at this stage, you need to read to still focus your ideas in under the uh, under the concept of private banking services. Okay, Libin, how about you? What is your concept? Key concept. Can you say it again? Camp education. Forget about Finland. Camp education. Oh my God. Do we find anything at all? <laughs> yes, camp education. Let's have a look. 36,000. 36,300. So you have, you have, Camp Education Export. Well, we have less here. I think uh, you may not find directly maybe camp education export, but uh, I think you'll find more about still you go one level up education export. Is it camp education or whatever education doesn't matter. It is education export and you have 242,000. Oh my God, we found something from Finland. The first two things from Finland. This is Teseus, some thesis. Vietnam is a potential market for Finnish education export. Some thesis, it's in Teseus. You can read about. So we have, you know, as I said, this is an ocean. In the ocean, how to pick up the good things. That's the, that's the challenge. Right, great. So this is the uh, this is the uh, Google Scholar, and mostly you will find those uh, next to it. Now here, uh, a second place that I recommend is the Yamk Library uh, Services, and in that. So this is the Yamk Library Services. We choose the, the guides. And here under the guides, we have the business administration and services. And under that, on the right side, we have the databases for articles. There are also other uh, databases. Here, what I recommend, the good ones are ABI Inform. This is a good one. And then under EBSCO databases, both the Academic Search Elite and the Business Source Elite, these are good ones. And finally, Emerald, those three are good databases for scientific articles. So here, if you go to ABI Inform, in my case, automatically the language changes to Finnish, but the one that is just under ABI Inform, 
that will take you to the database. Accept this. Now here, there is the advanced search. So you can search for some authors if you happen to know. So you will be searching some specific author using in author, or you can be searching for some specific keywords uh, in the document title. Don't say in the document text because you will find some word in the document text. So it will bring you a lot of uh, results. So usually what I do is I will be looking, searching for some keywords in the document title. Or maybe you can expand it to the abstract, but not anywhere. The document text, etc. And you can have a number of at the same time. Let's say you can put into, you can, Look into export in title and education in the title. And then when you are making the choice, I suggest that you choose here now don't limit yourself to full text because sometimes you may find something very interesting which doesn't have the full text. You can just take it and look for it in Google Scholar. You can have the full text from Google Scholar. Perhaps you want to include here only the peer reviewed. These are scientific articles. You can also choose your dates, maybe not. So let's let's search for that. Thirteen results. Export education. Uh -huh. So some of them they have the full text PDF. Some of them they don't. Those that they don't you can check from Google Scholar, that is one option. And the last option that I want to share with you, that is ResearchGate. So you can all become, you can all become, uh, ResearchGate is a, is a scholarly database where, uh, where many scholars share their, uh, share their, uh, articles, publications for free. So you can become a, a free free member there. You don't need to pay anything. And you can also, by doing that, search for those items there. In Google Scholar, as you saw, uh, it already brings to our attention some articles if uh, if uh, it is in research gate so this is research gate is open to everybody and and well, as we saw in in uh, here in google scholar sometimes as you see here it is already available in research gate so google scholar earlier this wasn't the case uh, but nowadays from Google Scholar, you can even get those what is available in ResearchGate. So you don't need to go separately to ResearchGate. Uh, that's how you would be searching for the literature. Do you have any, any questions? I guess you can still think about it during the break. So let's have a 15 minutes break and let's be back at uh, 10.32.